another day. Sometimes getting in that schedule, that routine, that habit, you can feel like you're living in your own personal Groundhog's Day, living the same day over and over again in a constant loop with no end in sight. But you know what, goddammit, sometimes that's what it's gonna take, so let's get this day started. I am just finishing up my coffee and also my propion. I'm gonna be heading out the door here in a second for the workout. But, you know, I just want to say it does feel damn good getting on a schedule. You're almost programming your brain into those good habits. You want to wake up at a certain time, you want to eat at a certain time, and you look forward to those workouts. You see your progress and the results in the mirror, and it really motivates you to keep pushing harder and harder. And I'm really looking forward to the end results. But you know what the good thing is? It ain't gonna stop there. Once you kind of build that, that habit and that schedule and that routine in your mind, you're just gonna wanna continue that. So that's another good thing about it. And uh, you know what, cardio is one of those things. And as much as people don't look forward to cardio, I think it can be important, but also is it really essential or what is really the proper cardio for you? Since this is a cutting program, I think it's a pretty good subject to talk about. Ah yes, cardio. It could be looked as a form of exercise some use as a way to reduce guilt caused by the overconsumption of food. You happy? Fatty make a funny? But it comes in many forms, and as you can see here, we are in the gym performing many different exercises which can stress the cardiovascular system. Some exercises stress it more than others. Compound exercises can stress it quite a bit more than let's say isolation exercises. But let's go back to what the word actually means. Cardio is from the Greek word cardia, meaning heart, which explains why the cardiovascular system or circulatory system, which is organ base, consists of the heart, lungs, and blood vessels that transports blood, oxygen, and nutrients through the blood via the heart. That's why you get those sick mad pumps, brah. And since the heart and diaphragm is a muscle, you can train it like any other muscle, making it stronger, more efficient, and healthier. So cardiovascular training can be used to increase the health and endurance of your circulatory system. But mostly a lot of people will perform cardio for energy management, i.e. using cardio to burn off calories for weight loss. But is it really necessary to get on a treadmill, bike, or elliptical to burn off calories and get lean? Not at all. Resistance training can be used just as well, if not better, to use lots of energy in a short amount of time. You can adjust your training to focus on cardiovascular strength by reducing your rest times, performing circuit training, or increasing the repetitions per exercise, thus forcing your heart rate to stay elevated for extended amounts of time. Today, we drive to the gym to spend hours on treadmills, bikes, or elliptical machines to feel better about ourselves because in this day and age, we mostly live sedentary lifestyles. From binge watching Netflix, office jobs, video games, and sitting in our car or browsing social media, we don't get the kind of activity like we once did. And I'm talking about back in the day when our bodies developed to be efficient at hunting, gathering, and overall roaming the lands. In those days, we consistently stayed active, so naturally we had a very lean and sinewy body type. So fast forward back to the present, and, well, we have vastly better technology and are living longer than ever. But at the same time, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, it's all an ever-increasing problem. To simplify it, we are eating more junk and moving less. So cardio can be an essential part of life, or in better terms, being active should be an essential part of life. Continuous movement requires more energy and therefore burns more calories. This is why you'll see the differences in body types when talking about different ways of training. A power lifter will have a large amount of body mass and body fat due to the fact that he or she eats more and has very long rest times with only short spurts of energy consumption. A crossfitter will have a lower body mass with a lesser amount of body fat due to the fact that their training is focused on more continuous movement and burns much more energy throughout their workouts. But when does all this become too much? It comes down to overtraining. Even a good thing, if done too much, can be bad. Too much healthy food can still make you obese. Too much water can dilute the sodium in your blood and make you sick or cause death. It's not necessarily cardio itself that is ever bad, it's the overuse of it, mainly to make up for poor nutrition. Remember this saying, you can't out-train bad eating habits. If you lead a healthy, active lifestyle and eat well, cardio in the form of a treadmill shouldn't even be seen as something you need unless you use it as a form of meditation or just like doing it, which I highly doubt. If you do any kind of resistance training or are an avid surfer, hiker, swimmer, or just overall active person, then that right there is your cardio. I've seen way too many people kill themselves in the gym on the cardio equipment and never see any results because they really aren't changing their lifestyle. The solution is never going to be more cardio, but changing your lifestyle into being more active and correcting your eating habits to get to the goal you've set for yourself. So all in all, it's better to get some kind of activity, even if you do have to get on a treadmill, but don't think that more cardio is the solution to your weight loss goals. 
cardio is only a fraction of the complete picture. And as you can tell, there's not one perfect cardio for you. You're just gonna have to search around and find what you enjoy doing and burn off some calories in the process. And remember, nutrition is gonna be very important. And speaking of nutrition, I think it's time for a recipe. Welcome to my kitchen. What's on the menu today? Well, it's a pretty short menu. There's only gonna be one item, and that's sweet potato fries. I just recently went to the grocery store and picked up some sweet potatoes and I figured this is a great opportunity to make a recipe out of these guys. And what better way than making sweet potato fries, one of my favorites. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. But you know what, if some of you are wondering what the hell is the big deal about sweet potatoes, everyone's going on and on about these guys. Well, for one, it's a lower glycemic food, meaning it's not gonna spike your blood sugar levels quite as much as let's say normal potatoes or other higher glycemic foods. So if you're interested about keeping your blood sugar levels at an even keel, then this is an excellent food for you. And for number two, I just love the taste of them. So I just wanna make sweet potato fries so I can eat them. It's a win-win for me. So let's get this thing started. What you'll need. <laughs> The first step is taking your sweet potato over to the sink and scrubbing it really well. This is going to remove any kind of dirt and get it nice and clean and ready to eat. The next step is cutting off both ends of the sweet potato. And then cut one side off of the sweet potato so that way you can flip it over and it'll lie flat on the cutting board. It'll be a hell of a lot easier to cut that way. Now all you have to do is cut it in a fry shape. Pretty simple. Once you have your sweet potatoes all cut up and they resemble fries, go ahead and place them in a bowl. Once they're in a bowl, drizzle olive oil all over them, or any oil of your preference. Toss them so that way the oil completely covers them. Then sprinkle some salt on top and also pepper and toss so that way it completely covers the sweet potatoes. So we have everything mixed up in the bowl. It's all ready to go. We have our oven preheated to 450 degrees. We're gonna put these sweet potatoes in the baking tray or baking pan and uh, first laying down the tin foil and just kind of placing them evenly throughout there and uh, we're gonna slip them right into the oven. We're gonna let it cook for about 10 minutes or so before we check on them and flip them over to make sure they're nice and crispy and golden brown on all sides. It definitely looks like they need um, about 15 more minutes of cook time just to get a bit more crispy cooked all the way through they are softening up quite a bit I can tell but flipping them over definitely helps and here we go the waiting game but it's almost done we're almost ready to eat these little buggers 15 minutes later oh it looks like those sweet potato fries are done they're brown on both sides cooked all the way through still a little bit hot now they're not gonna be like super crispy like normal french fries would be because they're not necessarily fried, they're baked, but uh, they're still damn good. They took a little bit longer to bake, about 30 minutes or so. I checked on them multiple times just to make sure they wouldn't burn, but I also wanted to make sure they were cooked as well and uh, hit it about right. So I'm gonna serve these up and um, get them ready to eat. So there you go, sweet potato fries are done. Super easy, super quick, and in my personal opinion, super delicious. I ate probably half of them as I was pulling them off the cooking tray and putting them on the plate for that sweet, sweet food porn shot. So they're screaming out to be consumed over here. I'm ready to eat them, because, oh, I know, hey. Gotcha. And as you can tell, I also made breakfast in the meantime too to have a complete meal. Got my proteins, got my greens, and got my lower glycemic carbohydrates. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick food segment. And until next time, keep eating. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Put Steve off.